Welcome back everybody to part four of our machine learning freelancer tutorial series. In part three I talked about some of the things that make shitty clients and some red flags you can look out for for finding these terrible clients so you don't even apply for the job. Well let's suppose the client passes all those uh, you know red flags. They've got good reviews, they leave good reviews for the most part. You know maybe they've got 50 some reviews and you kind of glance through them and they look mostly okay you go ahead and apply. I'm going to tell you a little story about how I did just that and almost got jacked out of 500 bucks. In the process I'll tell you three different things that you can look out for so that that doesn't happen to you. So uh, when I started doing freelancing I was doing some content writing because it was uh, fairly straightforward right I can string together a few words on a sheet of paper so I figured why not. I was hired to do a fairly large job producing blog articles at around 1,500 to 2,000 words and about 15 to 20 of those per week. Now if you're doing the math, it comes out to about 35,000 words per week or about 5,000 words per day. Now needless to say, this is a massive undertaking and it's quite difficult to do. Um, like an idiot, I went ahead and accepted and ignored a number of red flags. Red flag number one, the client lists an hourly job because the client knows you like hourly contracts. Why do you like hourly contracts? For a number of reasons, of course. You get paid for the time you actually put in. It shows up in your profile as you making X dollars per hour, and you get to uh, uh, rack up the number of hours built so that way when clients filter by that, you show up. Okay, so freelancers love the hourly contracts. The shitty clients know this, so they'll go ahead and post a job as hourly, which, hey, I thought if I'm getting paid hourly to write 5,000 words a day, that's a pretty good contract, right? No. Dude, uh, and the offer goes from um, hourly to fixed price. Now, this is a major red flag because the client has committed a cardinal sin. He has committed um, falsehoods in advertising, right? He advertised one thing and he's given you another. You wouldn't tolerate that if you were buying a product. You wouldn't tolerate that if you were getting a service. Why would you tolerate that from a client? You shouldn't. And it's a huge red flag. And it was the first thing that should have tipped me off that I was screwed. It didn't. Of course, I was stupid. Um, red flag number two. Uh, when you Google their name, negative stuff comes up. Always Google the name of the client to make sure that they don't have anything... On, uh, on the internet that indicates they do some shady shit. Uh, in my case, I didn't do this. I only did this after about six weeks into the contract when it became apparent that uh, not everything was on the up and up. Uh, when I did it, what I discovered was that the client had run a, a bit of a, a scheme where he was doing reviews, quote unquote reviews. He was hiring freelancers to write bogus reviews on service providers in a certain vertical. I don't want to give too many details because I don't want to get popped for slander, but the guy was basically paying for fraudulent reviews for service providers in a certain niche. And he was then using that to generate, uh, he was using that plus some content, content like I was providing. He also hired someone to produce content for this other venture where they were, you know, writing bunch of blog articles to drive traffic to the website. And of course, you, if you have traffic, you have a bunch of service providers, then you can sell advertising. That was the whole point was he was going to sell advertising and better reviews to these people. But all the reviews were fraudulent, so the whole scheme fell apart, uh, and a number of negative articles were written about him. And those showed up, showed up right on the first page of Google, so I should have seen it right away, but I was an idiot. So red flag number two is when you do a Google search for the client, some shady shit pops up. Um... And the third major red flag, and this is one you won't catch until later, but you can kind of catch hints of early on, is that the client will add in extra job requirements. So as I said, in this particular case, the uh, uh, client contracted me to write a significant volume of content. Uh, and then on top of that, he told me, oh, by the way, you've got to source images you got to source two to three images per article, then you got to upload the images, you got to upload the articles, and you got to publish them to my blog. So basically, I had to do the work of you know a couple different people in addition to coming up with ideas 
writing the content, editing the content. I had to then source images, which he paid for, to his credit. He did pay for the images. I didn't have to pay out of pocket. Uh, he did pay for the images, but I had to source them and make sure they went along with the article. And then, of course, when I had to upload it, he was using some shitty uh, WordPress server in, a, in the back corner of his office, and so it would lose connectivity while I was uploading the articles, and I had to start the whole process over. It added about an extra 30 minutes to every single blog article because you have to go find the, you know, the pictures, upload the pictures, upload the articles, uh, make sure the formatting is correct, all that stuff. So it ended up adding a couple few hours a week of labor and on top of an already monstrous amount of writing. So it was um, all around a bad experience. And so as a bonus, so when you when that happens to you, um, if you're dealing with a fixed price contract, just a little pro tip here, um, when you go to submit the work, the client becomes notified of your submission for uh, approval and the release of funds. And so the client uh, talked to me in the chat and said, hey, you know, I don't like the work you're doing. Because by that point, I was burnt out, wasn't doing a very good job in, in you know, you know, to kind of uh, uh, tell both sides of the story here. I wasn't doing that great of a job. I was, you know, pretty burnt out. I was uh, sick of his, his song and dance and his games. And uh, I wasn't doing the best job. He didn't like the content. I didn't like the job. I submitted the approval. I had uploaded the articles. So they're already out on the web. Of course, once stuff's on the web, it's there, right? You know, you could take the article down, but it's already snapshotted on archive.org. Uh, your name's already out there. It's already attached to it. So, um he didn't release the funds. Now, this was $500, which is not, it's not big money, but it's not a, a trivial sum of money, right? 500 bucks, uh, you, you feel that pain when you lose $500. So, um, he made a mistake, and this is the pro tip. So, we had some arguing, and I dropped it. And he did not formally dispute the quality of the work. He didn't, he didn't answer back through the, uh, the, uh, work submission system that he wanted changes. All I did was pitch a fit in the messages. So as far as Upwork was concerned, the work was fine and within two weeks I actually got paid the 500 bucks, but only because I knew a little something about the system that he did not. So I won through superior knowledge, not through superior negotiating skills, but hey, I'll take a win where I can get it. Um, uh, so yeah, so then he, of course, he ended the contract, he bombed my reviews, that's where the two-star rating on my profile comes from. I, of course, bombed his as well, um, but, you know, that, that doesn't really matter. I'm sure he, he's still going strong. I went to the website months later, it's still up and running, so I, I guess his venture's still going for him. So just to recap here, uh, three major red flags of shitty clients are, one, they'll change, they'll post a job as an hourly contract, but then make an offer as fixed price. Now, if you want to negotiate that with them and you agree to it, that's fine. But if they do it without discussing it beforehand, that's incredibly shady. Um, number two is when you Google their name, you find negative stuff on the Internet. Now, make sure you do this. I didn't do it until later. And then I slapped my forehead and said, oh, my God, I'm an idiot. I should have done this beforehand. And number three uh, is that they add in job requirements. So always make sure when you start the contract that the parameters are completely and clearly defined. So these are three things you can do to avoid getting scammed on Upwork, to avoid getting people that are going to try to jack you for money, try to get work for free. Um, and of course, make sure you read the previous reviews by other freelancers. If people have a pattern in this behavior, then they're going to you're going to see that in the reviews because other freelancers are going to let you know. I hope this has been helpful. Please share your stories of how you've been screwed by shitty clients. Uh, any other questions, leave them below. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified when I release new content. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you in the next video.